Hello everyone and welcome to another FPL video on the channel. In this one we're going to take a look at how we did in game week 27 and then my team selection for game week 28. So let's get into it. So as you guys can see on the screen we had an amazing week. We got 99 points from the wild card so absolutely buzzing with that. All of the team done very very well. Even some of the bench done bits, but obviously that doesn't matter to me. So yeah, 99 points and we got a green arrow into the top 100k for the first time this season. We are now at 93,000. Let's go. So starting off in net, we had Raya who got a clean sheet in one of the games. Nine pointer from him, brilliant return. Rico Henry, the same as Raya, the double Brentford clean sheet coming up clutch. They, uh, you know, I thought they were going to do crap when they conceded in that first game quite early on. But nonetheless, it doesn't matter because they've redeemed it with a double clean sheet. Trippier got an assist, no clean sheet. Five points from him, not bad at all. Estupinian, nine pointer from him. Clean sheet in the second game as well. Then we had the Brighton boys in midfield who both done bits. Solly March a bit unfortunate because he did actually score a goal in the first game, which was ruled as an own goal originally and then changed later, later in a few days to a goal of his. But unfortunately, we don't get the points for that. So realistically, he should be looking at maybe 18 points return, something like that, if he was to get bonus as well. But he ended up with 11. Uh, McAllister, who I went with captain, got 10 points, scored in the first game, didn't do anything in the second game. And Mitoma, who was the other bright midfielder who I didn't go with, did actually get 12 points. So realistically, there's not that much of a difference between the three. If you went with all three, brilliant. But yeah, they look great moving forward as well. Salah, zero points. Absolute stinker of a performance against Bournemouth. Missed the penalty. Put it in, you know, row Z plus. Rashford didn't do anything against Southampton. You know, Castemiro got red card early doors. And we look pretty poor after that. In the attack, though, this is where we shine as well. Oli Watkins, eight points. Another goal for him. That's now, what, six and seven, I think, for him. He's on fire. Really doing bits. And he's got a great fixture coming up. I still haven't changed Tony's name from Enketia. What am I doing? So, Tony, 13 points. Brilliant return for him. He got a goal and an assist. His assist came in like the 97th minute of the second game. But, yeah, great from him. Although, he did get a yellow card. So, he's now only one yellow card away from a two-match suspension, which is a bit of an issue. So, hopefully, he doesn't get that in 28 because then he'll miss both of the games in game week 29. And then the other attacker is Harry Kane. 13 points for him as well. Yeah, you know what? Harry Kane doing the business. What a striker. Brace for him. Got a good fixture in 28 as well. So happy to own Harry Kane. I feel like going him over Haaland now is justified. Although Haaland did score, but obviously Harry Kane doubled his score, I believe. Onto the bench, we had David Ahe, who got a clean sheet and eight points. Then Botman, two pointer. Chilwell, eight points. He did score. And then Madison as well. So yeah, I feel like I'm really happy with how this wildcard team has performed. I'm happy with the position it's in, you know, and, you know, moving forward, I'm, I'm really happy that we've got Chilwell as well. I think that was a great selection. So hopefully he can do the business in the next week. So let's take a look at how we're going to look next week. So starting off in net, we've got David Raya against Leicester at home. Now, this is not the best of fixtures. I do think Leicester, they do tend to score in their games. And, you know, I do have James Madison as well, who I, I want attacking returns from. But then I do have the double rent for defence. So it's a bit of double jeopardy there. But yeah, we do have Raya and Henry against Leicester at home. So hopefully they do get a clean sheet because that will amount to more points than Madison getting any returns. Then we have Trippier against Nottingham Forest away from home. Decent fixture that one. You know, Newcastle, they need to start keeping clean sheets again. Hopefully they can do that because we have the double up in defence with Botman as well as Trippier. Trippier, you know, a great attacking threat. Botman is literally there for the clean sheets. So if he doesn't, if Newcastle don't get a clean sheet, Botman will probably get nothing. And then we have Ben Chilwell against Everton at home. Now he's quite lowly owned. I feel like he's a great option to have as well. An attacking fullback, hopefully he plays wing back. If Chelsea do continue to play the five back role, he's in the left wing back. He looks like a fantastic option. And I do actually think he could be a great cap differential captaincy option. I am very tempted by that. He's currently my vice captain, but I am very tempted to go captaincy because I feel like if he bangs and he's my captain, my rank will shoot up. But let's move on to the midfielders. So then onto the midfield, you can see we've got two players that are actually playing and one that's not. I have made a transfer already, and that is to bring in Bakayo Saka for Mo Salah. Mo Salah didn't have a game, and I didn't want him moving forward really anyway. So now we have Bakayo Saka, who has Crystal Palace at home. It's a good fixture for him. 
you know, Arsenal, they want to bounce back after getting knocked out in the Europa League. The Premier League is now the only thing they are, you know, involved in. So they're going to want to get three points against Crystal Palace. However, Palace did just sack their manager, Vieira. So the new manager boost is going to come into full effect. And you already know what the new manager boost is. It basically guarantees points. So are Arsenal going to drop points against Crystal Palace? You know what, to be honest, I don't see it. I think, I think Arsenal will be too strong. And I think Saka will be involved, hopefully. Then we have a James Madison who has a Brentford away from home. Talked about this a bit earlier. I do have the double Brentford defence. So on one hand, you know, of course I want Madison to get points, but then I also want the double clean sheet from Brentford. So if Madison does draw a blank, it is what it is. Hopefully Leicester don't score, walk away with the Brentford double clean sheet. Then McAllister doesn't play. Um, not going to transfer any of the Brighton lads out though, because I want them for the great double game week they have. So we're just going to play with 10 and hopefully the 10 lads can do the business. So onto the attack now. And as you can see, we have Kane Watkins and Ivan Tony. Yes, I have finally changed his name. Ollie Watkins is my captain choice for the week so far. It's him or Ben Chilwell. Kane is also a good option as well as Tony. But for now, we are currently set on Ollie Watkins. Bournemouth for home, I think, is probably the best fixture of the week out of the, the rest of them. Although Chilwell does have Everton at home who don't really score goals. But yeah, I think Watkins, you know, he's on excellent form right now. He's on penalties. He's taking a lot of shots as well, which is a good thing. Uh, and I think, you know, I think he's got a good chance of getting a good return in this match against Bournemouth at home. I think Aston Villa will win. And you know what? I do think Watkins will score. Then Ivan Tony, Leicester at home. Leicester conceding goals in a minute. They're not looking very good. They are in trouble in the relegation battle. And I think Brentford will probably be too strong for them. Hopefully, Ivan Tony can get a couple goals in there. Like I was saying earlier, we do need to be wary with the fact if he gets a yellow card, he does get a two-game suspension and I will need to transfer him out. So he's definitely a transfer that I'm going to have to make at some point. Hopefully, though, he could survive for the double game week. Then Harry Kane, the English man, against Southampton away from home. Great fixture, but Spurs do tend to be a bit worse away from home, I believe. It's tempted to have Captain Harry Kane. You know, Kane can score against anyone. World-class striker on penalties, nailed on for the 90 minutes. So it is a very viable option. And if you did go with Harry Kane, it's very understandable. But for me, going a bit more differential, I suppose. I'm going to go with uh, Ollie Watkins. Or I might change it to Ben Chilwell. I'm not 100% sure yet. But that is how the side is looking. We are going to go with 10 men. I'm not going to make a minus four to transfer someone out who has a double game week next week. Don't see the point in that. So, yeah, that's how the lineup is looking. On the bench, it's De Gea, March, Estupinian and Marcus Rashford. They all don't play this week, but they all have double game weeks next week. So they won't be transferred out. So that's how the side is looking. What do you guys think? Who are you going to be captaining? You know, do you have a full 11 as well? Are you taking any hits, anything like that? If you need any FPI advice, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to get back to you with an answer to the best of my ability. But nonetheless, thank you all so much for watching. If you could subscribe, we're on the road to 500 subscribers. We're about 11 subscribers away now, so any subscription will be truly appreciated. But nonetheless, thank you all so much for watching and I'll catch you all next time. Cheers, guys.